All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. All right, so we're in day number four. I'm so excited. I just finished doing day number three since I did not record it yesterday, so it is gonna be online. Um, and we'll see how this, I'm recording this one now, so it should, should be online. So we're gonna recap. Day number one we, was find our vision. Because you can't, it's like going on a trip, and you say, oh, we're going on a trip, but you don't have a clue where you're going. First, you gotta know what you want, then you gotta go get it. But you can't go get it unless you know what you want. So that's why we did that on the first day. Find out where we are going, what we're aspiring to, what do we have dreams of. Big dreams, okay, big dreams. And then day number two, what is the blockage? What is stopping you? Now, I really wanted to share, um, I loved how Gloriella shared that it was emotional, but and I would love to be able to spend, uh, in fact, Gloriella, I'll give you a, um, a 30 minute stra strategy call privately if you want, because I, I know I can help you get to some pinpoints and stuff on that. Because that's a big umbrella. We all are ruled by our emotions on a bad day, or could be. We all could be, and we are. You know, we're human. And you know, we all know people that are ruled by their emotions all the time. They just run their mouth. They're angry. They just lash out. They, they have no control of their emotions. And then, then there are days where we have lots of control, but some days we don't feel good because we're like swimming in them. But you want to pinpoint, okay? And when you, instead of just saying it's a blanket of emotional, we want to get exactly what it is. Because we're going to talk about, we talked about that, like what do you do when you find out what the blockage is? Well, you speak to the mountain, okay? You can speak to that mountain and you can talk to the dawn. Let me see if I got, we got somebody that's got their microphone. Yes, yeah, needed. Okay. Let's see. Okay, I think. Hmm. I think we're good now. We still got somebody that's going that's got their microphone on. Hey. Linda. Okay, I think I might have got it. Okay, so here we are. We're talking about you have to focus on specifics. The more specific, the more, and this is the picture I like to give. It's if you you can change the trajectory of a bullet by just moving your gun a, a hair. So I want you to get the picture of that. That's why we're trying to like really pinpoint and focus specific because if you just have a broad, you're kind of just hitting and missing in general. We're talking about going and getting something and being honed in on it, okay? So that's why just emotional is still too blanket. You gotta say, you know what? I suffer with, I, we're doing a Bible study right now and it's called um, Feeling Uninvited. It's Uninvited by Lisa Turkers. Okay, if you feel uninvited and that is something that rises up, and I actually suffered with that, and you would never see that in my life because I, I mean, I'm invited to a lot of stuff. So if you looked on the outside, you wouldn't know that I suffered with that. I didn't even know that I did. Um, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on that, but basically, it came from when I was a little girl. And I went to my sister's grandmother's, my, it was basically my step grandmother. She wasn't my grandmother, and I would go over there, and she, of course, she favored the other children. And um, I never got the purple cup. Okay, so you're thinking, well, if you were a parent, you would think that was silly. And she would even say, well, no, Lynn gets the purple cup. You know, she would just like, like almost put it in front of me. And you don't get it. Because I'd say, oh, I want the purple cup. I was the little one, you know, and you know how the kids do. I want the purple cup, I want the purple cup. And, and no, you don't get the purple cup. And I, I, didn't, I didn't think anything of it. And probably if I told my mama, she was probably like, get over it, it's the cup. But what happened, somebody's got their, I can hear um, people talking. Right. Yeah, I can't find it. Somebody's phone is um, not muted. Okay. It's whoever just talked. If you look for that button on yours, yes, you found it. She might just okay. Okay, here we go. All right, so back to the feeling of uninvited. Now, I never ever, as a little girl, never had I mean, nothing thought about that. But later in life, about thirty years later, I was working with a counselor because I was really. Anytime you have an emotion that is greater than the circumstance, any emotion that's greater than the circumstance warrants. It's a deeper root. 
Okay. So this is what I do when I work with people. I ask them to close their eyes and say to them, when was the first time you felt that? Well, that came up out of my mouth because everything's in here in your spirit. Okay. Everything. And I said, well, uh, it was what I stated. And my grandmother said, um, they went to the beach and I wasn't invited. And so we kind of explored that. So my point is that it's not just emotional. It would be for me emotional when I feel like I'm not invited. Okay. Now that does not rule my life now because I'm aware of it. And it really wasn't that big, but it was there. And until I was aware of it, I couldn't speak to that mountain. Okay. But now I speak to that mountain. And I tell it, because that's a long time ago, but it, it has caused damage in some of my relationships. And so, I, so this is how you would do it, okay? And we, we talked a little bit about this yesterday, that you would speak to that mountain and you would cast it into the sea. So I would say, oh, that is a lie. I am, I, that, I am invited. I do, and then I would confirm it. I do have people that love me. I have plenty of people that, that I love to do life with me and I love to do life with them. So you see that I'm, I'm basically affirming myself, okay? So how do you get, you're basically encouraging yourself. So that's how you speak to the mountain here, speak specific. So I just wanted to, to touch on that. So you need to get specific. And that does not rule me. I am the life of a party. I have my own parties. I have invited to plenty of parties. And if that rises up, I'm aware of it. But, it's, it, but it did. But it did. So um, you have to speak specific to whatever the mountain is, whatever the blockage is. You have to confess and take authority over specific. All right, so here we are today. That's what we did in day three. Day four is, I'm calling the action plan of the map. Because you can know where you're going, like we're going to go to North Carolina next week. But if we don't get a map when we get off that airplane, if we're not going to go to the place we're supposed to go, we could ride around and be in Asheville, Hendersonville, um, Negativeville, or Holmesville. I don't even know. You Whatever. We could be in any Ville. Because if you don't get the map, if you don't have a plan, and I can promise you my husband's going to have a plan on that, but it, it's the same with our life. If you just exist and you're waiting on God or somebody else, then like the man on the mat, okay, if you're going to lay on the mat, then you're going to still be there next year. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about being somewhere greater next year, mighty, glory to glory. So if you, this is getting your map or your action plan. So how do you get your map? And what is an action? And why do I have to have action anyway? Because you cannot just believe for something and it happened. You cannot just speak it forth and it happened. There's a lot of things you can, okay? There's, there are things that you can, but God says in James, he says, faith without works is dead. Now, what he means, and a lot of people take that into salvation. That is not what that means at all, because you are saved by faith, period, but you are rewarded by your works. There's two um, it's two separate things. You get into heaven by faith, if you believe on Jesus Christ, but you reward it for your works. God expects us to do works. He has got us here. We are his agents. We go in his name. We are here to do things. He did not gift us with things to sit around and watch TV. And I mean, I know some people don't like to hear that, but we are here to do things and we store up eternal treasure. When we stand before him, what we do here, we will be rewarded for. Okay, so get excited. I'm kind of like excited that I have the opportunity and the awareness now to do it. So we have to, we have to take action. He also told the disciples, get in the boat and we're going to the other side. Those are action words. He told Joshua, that is your land. I've given it to you, but you have to go possess it. Okay, that takes action. It takes courage. It you've got, takes movement. I love this song. The Mary Mary is the name of the group. And the song is uh, Go Get Your Blessing. I love that song. Go get it, go get it, go get your blessing. And on a day when I need energizing, that's one of the things I do. I listen to that song and it just, it just motivates me because first of all, the blessings are ours. It's yes and amen. Everything we, the world is our canvas. And the Lord says, I'm a God of, he's the God of everything else, every cattle on every hill. He's God of abundance, glory, to glory. I mean, he, it's like, go get it, girl. Go get it. What you, go get your blessing. What you want? Go get it. So, the, so this is what we're doing today. We're getting a map. We're getting a plan of um, we know what we want. 
we know and then we, we've spoken to the blockage and we've decided not to be stopped by hindrance we're moving that out of the way we're going to do it scared we're going to do it scared we're going if that mountain's still sitting there and we're going to walk around it or climb over it but we're going to go anyway we're just going to do it i mean that's how sometimes you just got to do it so we're past that so what do you do between the mountain and the manifestation what do you do during that time that's what i want you to map out so on so on a piece of paper i'd like for you to draw a little stick man that's you draw a mountain and then draw yourself over the mountain a new little stick man remember pictures worth a thousand words seeing it so now you, you're over the mountain because you want to see yourself over the mountain and even if that mountain's still talking to you you're, it's a process and then between where that stick man is and the manifestation of you on a stage or you losing weight you know um and speaking of that the one that's online that wants to lose weight um i want to encourage you Go get you a pair of uh, jeans, like that's two sizes smaller or a size smaller. Not something that's, you know, where your end goal is, but something in between, you know, a little reward on the way. So in between where you are and where your finish line is, that's what we're going to map out, okay? And we're going to get four major things. They might not come to you today, but I want you to draw four little lines. So we're dividing into quarters. So where, you know, you're a quarter, you're halfway, you're three quarters and you're there because right now if you've been doing what we've been talking about doing you're not where you used to be you're not where you're gonna be but thank you Lord I'm not where I used to be okay so you see you see a map of progress because when you get progress it gives you hope it gives you in, it excited it gives you encouragement it's when you look back and you say see how you not over the back there then you're able to take another step on a bad day or even a good day you might take three steps so you're dividing it into four and now we're gonna we're gonna do some big milestones and I'm gonna use Linda for an example because she's shared with everybody how she wants to speak on a stage and I don't know Linda you might chat and tell me um, are you speaking right now and tell me what that looks like today because I'd love to get a picture of what your next step is because that that's what we're doing where you are and where you got to end up I want you to go to the 50% mark halfway there and I want you to draw a picture, write a couple of things. What would 50% there look like? What would you be doing? What, what would you be doing halfway there that's gonna get you to the full fruition? What does that look like? So if it's losing 20 pounds, then halfway would be 10. Okay, if it's um, working, you know, moving in the supernatural, then halfway would be um, praying for somebody. So if supernatural looks like, and I know Kirk's heart, supernatural looks like, um, God will be using my prayer life as I lay hands on people for healing. God will say, go pray for that person and healing will happen. So what does it look like halfway? Because God's building, you know, he's building your uh, excitement about going. He's building your obedience about going. He's teaching along the way. He's setting the people up that you'll come into appointments with. He's, you can't, sometimes we can't believe like before you speak on a stage to 5,000, you've got to speak to a conference room of 50. So what is halfway? I need everybody. And I want, I want y'all to share y'all's halfways because when you prophesy, that's how it starts coming to pass. So I want y'all each, everybody that's online that can talk. I know some people are driving and can't. But anybody that can talk, tell me your halfway mark. What's the halfway mark? Hi, Terry. Hey, Miss Linda. She says she's going to tell us. Come on, Linda. <laughs> well, <laughs> my halfway, I've, I'm pretty sure I'm in about two thirds, but next two weeks, April 22nd, I'll be hosting a conference and the book launch and my book launch. Oh, and I will be one of the speakers. So already I'm speaking. Yes. I made contact with a friend in another island asking her to come there to do a conference um, because I already have a, a theme of a conference. My book is called Soul Survivor, but the theme of the conferences will be called I Am a Soul Survivor. Oh. So I'll be doing I Am a Soul Survivor conferences um, throughout the region and never know it might be doing it in the United States too. Come on, girl. Come on. Okay, so she <laughs> prophesied what she's going to do, and she's already taken movement. So her halfway mark is she's in it. She's in her halfway mark. But she's here saying, okay, how can I keep this all? How can I get this going faster? And so, Linda, what I would say to you is, 
Okay, you are already taking action. That is awesome because that ball is already that's movement's happening. What else can you do? That can you've made a phone contact. So this is what I would say to you. Where? Yes, you go, Linda. You go. You get some cheering. <laughs> Um, see how inspiring the words people are encouraged by the words of her testimony. She's testifying to her movement. And when she testifies, then our spirit goes, Oh, you know what? I can do this. That, if she that's can right. do it, I can do it. We're getting encouraged by her testimony and she's not where she wants to be. Cause where you want to be, if y'all get this or not, you're going to get there and God's going to give you another drink. Okay. We are yeah. never there until Jesus comes. It's glory to glory. But he wants us living big. He doesn't want us just settling right where we are. Not that conferences aren't enough. You know, these, these, no, she's going to be on stage. God's got bigger things. So it's like, are more conferences than she's doing? She's got three a month instead of one. You know, so that's, Linda, I'm so excited. So, so I want to encourage you to add two more things in there, like for your 75 mark. Like maybe you will, something you're not doing. Lord, show her father. In fact, let me stop right now because I didn't open with prayer. Lord, I just want to give you glory. I want to honor your name, Lord, Father. Father, we just, we need you. Nothing in our own mind. We need the spirit of the Lord, Father. That's what you trump anything on this earth. We need your revelation. We need your understanding and wisdom. And so, Lord, I just pray right now that you would give all of us what we need, those, those mile markers of what we can do. Give us ideas that only can come from you give us favor that can only come from the anointing divine appointments that only you can set up we give you glory we get excited lord we thank you father for the ability to move in your kingdom and be subjects of your kingdom we call you king we call you glorious and amen amen so so linda you what do you think you could do at the 75 mark like what are some things you could do now outside the box like besides that call, in addition to what's the next something else you could do to get yourself out there. Um. Ooh. <laughs> Actually, I'm looking for um, what I call a doorkeeper, which is someone who can go ahead of me and open doors, like um, a personal assistant type person who will go into countries and make contacts for me. I'm already on Facebook and I blog a lot and, you know, reaching far parts of the world with the blogs. I'm an author, so I want to have books like Joyce Meyer. You know how she has all these books wherever she goes? So that was part of it. Awesome. Okay, so y'all heard she just aspired to be like Joyce Myers. She's not saying, I want to be Joyce. She's saying, I want to, she's my, she's my um, example of what I'm going to model. That's what, and tomorrow, That's right. she's already got an example. Okay, so Linda, right on your 50 mark, 50% 50 mark, halfway there, where you're kind of, you're really kind of right there right now, or you might be on the 25 because you're, it's up to you. You put it where you see it, but write down personal assistant, the, the doorkeeper, gatekeeper, write that down and say, Lord, send them, send them. Cause you already have such an expectation in your voice, but write it down. Because when you write it, he says in Habakkuk two, write it down, make it plain so that somebody else could run with it. So clear that, that you don't even have to explain it so clear that you've spoken it forth and it's already going and the angels have hearkened to it, that it's so clear. So you command it. So Lord, I'm in agreement with her. So I'm going to just, I'm going to share because I, I love, I love this ability to be able to agree. Father, your word says that when two or more agree, we can come into your presence. And so Lord, that's right now. That's where we are now. We dwell in this a secret place. We're coming into agreement and your word says that we can ask anything in your name and it shall be done. So we ask in the name of Jesus and it shall be done. Lord, I'm believing that you're sending that person to her. Lord, I'm, I'm asking you to trump faith, trumps time. And so I'm asking for that quickly, Lord, quickly, so that your will can be done on this kingdom. And this, your kingdom can be brought to this earth in Jesus' name. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. It's awesome, awesome. Okay, anybody else want to share their 50% mark? What they, if they're at zero, where do they think they need to be at 50%? Part of what she just did is saying it out loud, prophesying it, it also holds you accountable. That'll be in tomorrow. It'll hold you accountable because when you say it, it's like it's dragging you forward. It's like, okay, I said it. Now I've got to walk in it. Yes. 
Yeah, that's good. Okay, I love it. Oh, Maxine's in agreement. And, and y'all, the power of agreement that's on this call right now is amazing. Okay, so does anybody else want to share what their 50% mark is? Okay, go ahead, Gloriella. Let's see. Let me, let me, um, okay. I'm not sure how to, can you unmute yourself? I'm not sure. You're not showing a microphone. Hmm. Gloriella, is your microphone on? Does it show on your phone? She's wanting to try to speak. Maybe you could chat it if you can't. Um, yeah, I don't see how I can turn your microphone on. Okay, here we go. It doesn't show okay. Okay, so, so Gloriella, how about you type it? Because I'd love to hear from you since you were raising your hand. I command her microphone to come on in Jesus' name. Okay, we're waiting a few minutes. I'm not see if she's typing. I can't, I don't see a microphone. I see it on everybody else's. Let's see. Let's just talk in here. Hmm. Okay. All right, so so here we are on our action plan. Now wait, and if she if she checks here, she goes, Gloriella, my 50% mark is team leader. Okay, so so my question to you, are you a team leader now? Because you talked about you had a team. But your 50%, so tell me where you are now so I can get a gauge for where you are now. And do you have people under you at all? Or are you just starting out? And then um, her 50% mark is team leader. Everybody can see that. She's just a senior consultant. So you have no one under your team yet. But she wants to get, um, she wants to be a team leader 50%. So tell us what constitutes a team leader. Is that like three people, five people? What would give you that, that title? Okay, so she, um, I have five team members and only two active. Now, I will say this on, on this. Okay, so put whatever at the 50% mark, put what team leader means, like how many people you have to need. Go ahead and put a call a number. At 50%, I'm going to be a team leader and I'm going to have 10 people or whatever that number looks like, a three actives, five actives, and their lines will be strong. Whatever team leader is five active. There we go, five active, okay? So put that on your, write that on the 50% mark. Put it where you can see it. Put it where you have to look at it every day and you put your hands on it and you thank the Lord that you have five people and you start praying for those five people. Okay, you just start, Lord, show me who those people are. Let me start praying for them. You, you start praying. Um, Glor <laughs> Gloriella, do you believe in prayer? I, I like to ask this question because, um, you know, I want to be sensitive. If, if you don't believe in prayer, okay, let me just say it where it's more universal. This is how I would do it. I would pray for the people that are coming under me. I want their lives to flourish. I want to be an example that, yes, okay, okay, then I'm going to speak to you. Okay, because I want to coach you the way, um, the way that you believe. Okay, so this is what I would do. You, call, you put those five down. You lay your hands on that paper, and you start calling those people out. You say, Lord, I don't know who they are. Start giving me a burden. Show me, um, show me how to pray for these people, Lord. Show, give me their names. Tell me what their families are. And he will lay, like you'll get a couple or you'll get a family or whatever. And you just, if you don't know how to pray, you just say, Lord, I just pray that you would bless them. If they don't know you, I pray they come to know you, Lord. I pray if they're married, that their marriages would come into unity, Lord. Father, I pray um, a blessing over that their lives would flourish. You just bless them. You pray over them. Lord, and I thank you, Father, that they, when they come under me, that I'll be able to sow good seed into them, Lord. And Father, that they will be prosperous, that everything, and I would say that everything their hand touches will prosper lord i thank you that that their hands will prosper and it will come into my house and they will be blessed to bless me and i will release that blessing where you tell me to bless and i thank you that i'm blessed to be a blessing you see you speak that word over that and so at that 50 percent mark you put that down and so then this is what you do now now we're going to go backwards it's the same thing we did on the first day you set your goal now how do you get from zero to 50 percent and I kind of did that a little bit with Linda. What do you do in the meantime? Out of the box, okay? We're not because if you were, if you can do it how you're doing it, 
you would already be doing it. Okay, so I want to encourage you to get out of the box. So what I want to say, um, Max, let's see, Gloria, Gloria, I'm saying you, at the 25% mark, you need two, you need three active people, okay? Because you, you can't get two and a half, so we go round up to three. So we want three active people. So you take those people and you start sewing into those people. You start encouraging them. You start going to meetings for them. Things that you haven't been doing. You call, make calls. Or figure out where you see activity. Like if your activity comes from making cold calls or, or uh, knocking on doors or going to the mall and meeting people, I don't, I don't know what it looks like. That's how I would coach you. I would find out what your gifts are. Like, for example, I have a really good friend of mine. She is a, um, a gatherer. Okay, she can gather people all day long. That's her gift. I, I'm not a gatherer. Now, when you gather them, I can, I can teach them. Okay, bring them on. I can, I can move them from there. So you figure out what you're good at, okay? And you find that little niche, and you start drawing those people. You do whatever you need to do in that little niche that's in your comfort zone, or you might need to get out of it. You need to find something, and the Lord's going to show you what that is. He will show you what it is. He will give you the edge. He will give you secrets that are fenced in for you. Because that's what he does. You have to know it, believe it, ask for it, and expect it, and be willing to do it as crazy as it might be. Okay, if you don't, if it's uncomfortable, it's probably God. Okay, he's when he grows you, when he's asking you to do stuff, go for it. So you spend your next to the twenty-five mark, your goal, you fill in your goal, and you say, I need three more people between here and five. I need three. So that's what each of you will do. You will take what does zero and 50 need to happen. What's in the middle of that? And then you take 50 and 100 when you get there. What needs to happen there? Look at what your gifts are or your strengths, okay? And brainstorm about what you can do that you haven't been doing. And also, I love what Linda shared. Look at the people that you aspire to be similar to, like your leaders. See what's working for them. See how they're getting fruit. And you mimic what they do okay so if your leaders that are already you know at that mark and what they did to get there let's say they you know had luncheons or they uh went and got in committees like maybe they went to the chamber of commerce or they joined the women's club or girl put just expose yourself to areas and networking areas you have never been in before and ask the lord to make you like a magnet when you walk in that place and you start i teach i teach in a series i have a, my signature series teaches you how to connect it's a lot of john maxwell's connecting like how you can connect and communicate girl you get those connections this is for everybody you get those connections because everything's done inside of a relationship and once you get those connections people will start doing some of that work for you so anybody else want to share before have any questions we have um just a couple more minutes Let me make sure i um covered everything hi terry Hi, Maxine. Yes, I <laughs> I like you. I like Linda. I like people who, for me, I like to teach. Because mm. I hear, look at you and listen to you. I feel so encouraged. Oh, awesome. Yes, because all the stuff that you're saying is what I believe in and, and, and it's what I like to share. That's awesome. So I guess I told you that I'm looking for my niche or my niche, as they say here. and um. I am really still trying to pinpoint it, but I know I like to encourage, exhort, and to teach. Okay. So I guess my quarter, quarter mark would be to find people that I can share, teach, encourage, exhort, to be yes. who God has made them to be. Yeah. I know that to do that, what you just said, you have to get out there into groups and find people. And command. People say that when I enter a room, they feel my presence. They know that here is something, you know, commanding that, you know. So, and I know that whenever I speak too, it's like hush, dead silence, and everybody's listening. The Lord has put me before a church, several church um, sermons before, uh -huh. where this, the, the pastor had open mic. And the Lord and the Holy Spirit said, go, go, go. And I'm like, but I'm so timid. I'm so scared, Lord. And he said, go. And I wouldn't go. And I felt like a fire was burning me up on the seat because I wouldn't go. And then another opportunity came in the church and I went up and the, Lord, the Holy Spirit said to me, now that you're here, say these things that I'm going to have you to say. And I did it. 
before babies were crying and people were whispering and so on, when I started to speak, the whole church fell quiet. You could hear a pin drop. Not a child, not a baby cried. And whatever the Lord put in my spirit to speak, that is what I did. I said. And at the end, and then he told me when to stop. And after the service, everybody came to me. Oh my God, that was so good. Oh, I'm so encouraged. Oh, I know I have hope. Oh, this, oh, that. And I'm saying, Lord, no wonder the Lord was pushing me to go up there and speak. And, you know, we shouldn't have fear. My greatest inhibitor is fear. And, you're, and I know that we're not supposed to fear and that perfect love cause, I know all of that, but it's just a weakness, you know, to, to stand up and to do what you're supposed to do. But once I pass that and start to speak, man, it's like the Lord takes over and everybody is just at rapt attention and they're learning. And I do it with, with hilarity. People are always laughing. Sometimes I wonder what they're laughing about. They said, I don't know, just how you said it, how you spoke, how your body action, your body language, everything. You know, and it just so sort of Maxine, Maxine, are you speaking right now? Like, are you actively like speaking in churches, or how, what does that look like right now? Are you speaking on a regular? No, race? I'm not speaking. I'm not going out to speak. I'm okay. only just speaking on, on a prayer line. Okay. Right now, so this is this is your assignment. Your fifty percent mark is to be speaking at least once a month. Now, you can ask the Lord, but this is the thing. You can ask him all day long. When you have gifts, you have to start utilizing them. That's how you grow in them. So this would be what I would coach you to do. Outside your comfort zone, prayer line's great, but you are called to speak. And so the way you start doing that is you, maybe you teach a Bible study. Or maybe you go to the church, local church, and say, um, I would love to be involved with a women's group. I, I could. You don't have to necessarily take the stage. There's steps. You can say, can I start doing the introduction? You know, you just got to, you got to step out, go pass your card out, go show up at different places, but you have, that's what you've got to do next. Your 25% mark, because at 50%, you want to be speaking once a month. Okay. And, it, and don't worry about what it looks like because God changes that a lot of times. Anyway, I have so learned what you think is it'll come out another way. I thought that I was going to be on a stage and the Lord's got me teaching in the world. Okay. So you, you just, you just go, you need to start getting in front of people and yes, you're afraid and that's okay, but you're not going to claim that anymore. I thank you, father, that I have the spirit of the Lord. I thank you that I am courageous. You every day you say, I thank you that I'm courageous, Lord. I thank you, father. You don't speak anymore that you're afraid. And I know you were sharing with us, but I'm just saying from now on, cause you know what? You already have a vision, but you have to start walking it out. Don't, I think sometimes I'm, I'm really suffering with this. I try to make the vision and I'm, I want it to look a certain way. And if it doesn't look like that, I don't move. Just rest and start moving, moving towards it, no matter what it looks like. So I just want you to find somewhere to share. Even if it's go to a Bible study and you start sharing there, you know, you don't have to have the stage to share. You can be in a group. That's step one, but you have to be actively speaking. And I will say this on obedience, and we've got three more minutes. Whenever the Lord lays on your spirit to do it, just do it. As crazy as it feels, as uncomfortable as it feels. And look, don't worry about it. Creflo Dollar, I might have shared this story. I love this story. The Lord told him he was going to preach. I think I did share this. And um, he, he got up there to preach. Nobody came, and he preached to empty chairs. Okay? And he said, well, Lord, I thought I was going to preach. And he said, I'll ever preach to empty chairs again. But see, so much of the part of getting the boat and go to the other side is to go. Okay? So I am so excited and proud of you for owning. It's, you're scared and even scared of what the Lord's giving you, the mandate. But I want to encourage you and kind of push you forward and tell you, girl, you can do this. You go find somewhere to speak. It, it just, it does, your 25% mark is speak somewhere. It doesn't have to be on a stage yet. 50% once a month. Right now it's your 25. And so you just go out there and you just tell people, you know, I'll speak. I want to be, go get in a Bible study. Go join a mastermind group. Get in anything where you get, got people to where you can, or maybe there's groups of masterminds where they'll, each person will facilitate. That would be a good thing where you facilitate one meeting. So you don't have to go all of them. You go somewhere in between. Okay, guys, it's um, time's up. I'm so excited y'all shared. It's so interesting because this is what happens in a mastermind group. It takes five days before people will share. 
That's a, that I just telling you all this information so y'all know because it's a trust factor and it's, that's healthy and good. It takes five days before people really open their door to their heart. And so I just want to tell y'all, thank y'all. I am so, I'm so excited. I cannot wait to hear testimonies from some of you. And I just know y'all, I want y'all to know that I am praying for y'all in a way like mighty. Okay. I want to see y'all's lives lifted like probably more than y'all do. I really do. That's my heart. So I will see y'all tomorrow and I want y'all to be thinking and everybody to share what their 25, 50 and 75% mark is. So the way you move forward is you have to have a map. So y'all make y'all smack. Okay guys, I'll see y'all tomorrow.